Hello everyone. Uh, this is theme six. In the first, in the second section about the third year syllabus regarding the course of linguistics. Theme six, uh, by the way, theme six has been divided into uh, sub, uh, let's say, sections. This is to uh, simplify our uh, presentations and uh, to have focus on given points in order to understand uh, the main concerns of this uh, theme. Theme 6 is about language acquisition. Before I start talking about the content of uh, this part, part 1 of Theme 6, let me explain what, what, what do we mean by language acquisition. Language acquisition, if we want to make it uh, clear enough for, uh, for you, it has to do with, uh, let's say, the main scopes of psycholinguistics, or let's explain it in another way. When we talk about language acquisition, it, it means what are, here you answer the question what areas uh, uh, psycholinguistics is concerned with. Overall, there are three main areas. The first one, it's language acquisition. Second one, it is, let's say, um, language processing. Generally, we refer to this as also language comprehension and the third one it is language production so we have language acquisition language processing in between which is comprehension and then language production it's similar to input processing and then output this is how language is uh, uh, is processed uh, in the mind stage one it is language acquisition in this theme theme six we are going to present uh, basics regarding theme six in the first part of this theme, we are going to talk about two main points. First, we want to uh, explain some relevant terminology to language acquisition. And the second one, we are going to explain the difference between the two uh, basic uh, fundamental concepts, on one hand, acquisition, and on the other one, learning. Why? Because uh, sometimes these two concepts are very debatable and confusing. Of course, we will talk about this when it comes to uh, talk about them later on. Let's start with uh, some relevant terminology uh, uh, and we try to demystify it that is related to, uh, let's say, language acquisition. We have uh, the two uh, first terms. We have the first language acquisition or first language acquisition and second concept it is second language acquisition, uh, second language, uh, uh, second language, second language acquisition. When we talk about uh, a first language, generally, uh, it's that language uh, that we acquire. Here we are talking about acquire acquisition that we, we acquire at an early age of our life within the critical period. It is also referred to as the mother tongue native language, arterial language, or simply L1. This is first language, the first language, or L1. That means it is the language that any human being acquires the first time and utters and speaks the first time. The second language, it's different from the first language. It is language that any person learns after the first language, L1. According to some scholars, the defining difference between the first language, L1, and the second language, L2, is the age the person has learned the language. I want to make clear enough this point because it's very important. Uh, when we say a first, first language is any language that we acquire the first time, in our life and second language is the second language that we learn here we, we we make a distinction between the terms acquisition and learning acquisition and learning now what is the line that we have to consider and that makes the difference between acquisition and learning this is according to Le, uh, eric lenenberg in 1968 68 the critical age period. The critical age period. So, according to Eric Lindenberg, all what we 
obtain. Let's, let's use the term obtain. Before and during the critical age, it is L1. It is acquisition. And all what comes right after the critical age period, it is L2. Which means, in other words, that within the critical age, within the critical age period, any person generally acquires his first language. And sometimes the first one language could be not only one language, two languages, sometimes three languages. Why? Because I give you an example to understand this. Let's, let's, let's imagine that someone lives uh, uh, in a bilang bilingual context. What, what do you mean by bilingual context? That means the mother and the father, they are of uh, two different, they have two different languages. They sp speak two different languages. And the, the mother speaks a given language. The father, too, speaks a given language. Th their, their infant, when acquiring his or her L1, he can acquire the mother's language and the father's language. In this case, we talk about L1. But here we have two L1s. The first L1, it's the language acquired uh, from the mother. And the second L1, it's the language acquired from the father. But there is condition here. It's that the, these two languages are acquired during the critical age. To make this example clear enough for everyone, let's say that the mother is a French person and speaks French. And the father is Algerian, speaking Arabic. So the mother, mother's language, native language is the French, and the father's native language is Arabic language. The infant at home is exposed to French, the mother's language, and to Arabic language, the father's native language. So the infant can acquire these two languages. This simply means that this infant can have two L1s. Both of them, they are acquired. I focus on the term acquired. Later on, I explain the difference between acquisition, the term acquisition, and the term learning, the other term, learning. Now, after the critical age, all what we obtain as language, and here we use the term learning, it is L2. It will be L2, second language. From this example, we can say that an, an L2, for example, could be a language that we learn at school, English language. So here it is a Spanish language. Some, some students, they, they learn Spanish at the, uh, let's say, secondary school level. In some secondary schools, they teach uh, Spanish. In some schools, they teach, uh, for example, uh, on all, all, all schools, they teach, for example, English in the middle school and the secondary school. So L2 here, uh, let's say uh, English or English language or Spanish language is an L2. Why? First, because it is learned. Second, because it is obtained, got after the critical age. So in, in, in one word, when we talk about first language and second language, we can say, summarize, that a first language is any language that we acquire. It could be one, as well as it could be two, it could be three, it could be many languages, depending on the exposure to it. Uh, uh, people or infants, generally children, are exposed. So L1 is any language that is uh, acquired during and before the end of the critical age. On the other hand, second language is any language that is learned after the critical age. Now let's see the second term, which is demystify the two terms, acquisition and learning. What is acquisition? I think the best example or the best explanation was given by Stephen Krashen, 1982, in his famous uh, monitor hypothesis theory, who made a distinction between acquisition and learning. According to Krashen, the acquisition of a language is a natural process. On the other side, 
learning is conscious. What does it mean this? It simply means when we talk about language acquisition, it's something that we do subconsciously uh, without any uh, uh, want. We do not, we are not prepared. We, we, we do it subconsciously. This is, uh, uh, think about uh, the first language you, you have acquired. The first language, you got it without any effort, without any uh, preparation, without any uh, training. You, you got it very easily and subconsciously. However, learning, when it comes to learning, is something that is very conscious. It's systematic. It, it needs preparation, readiness. It needs willing. It needs uh, uh, some gradation. It needs uh, assistance sometimes. Of course, in L1 there is assistance, but it's not like in L2. Assistance in L2 is more significant. You need a teacher, for example, when we talk about assistance. Uh, when we talk about, uh, for example, uh, acquisition, so uh, we talk about that act that we do without any preparation and like uh, learning. So this is the main difference between acquisition and learning. Let's now look at some similarities and differences between first language L1 and second language L2. Acquis uh, acquiring our L1 native language and learning a second language. First, first criterion is speed. Learning a second language could be a lifelong process for many L2 learners. Despite their continuous efforts, most learners of a second language will never become fully native like in it. Speed. When we talk about speed, it's very easy. When we talk about our uh, acquiring our L1, we do that very quickly. Generally, it starts by the age of two. Baby starts uh, babbling, cowing, babbling, producing uh, one word sentence, two word sentences, uh, half a sentence, uh, one sentence, until the infant becomes infant by the age of three or four. The, uh, the infant becomes uh, competent in L1. It, it, it is something that is very, uh, very condensed. It is acquired in a very, very short time, L1 or L1, our native language. However, when it comes to L2, it needs a long time. As it is written here, it is a lifelong process. Sometimes people remain all their lives learning an L2. And in many cases, with some exceptions, of course, these people could never acquire that proficiency, that, very, that high competence in L2, which means they, they can never be fully proficient and competent. Uh, the second criterion, stages. Of course, learning a second, a second language occurs in a systematic way and through systematic stages. In acquiring an L1, these stages are also present but never appear because they overlap and the person never feels that these stages are present. Of course, uh, uh, talking about acquiring our L1 and learning a second language, they go through stages. Generally, according to some scholars, th there are similar stages. But with uh, our L1 acquisition, these stages, they overlap. Simply, we, we never feel them. Why? Because we acquire our uh, L1 very shortly, in a short time. However, in L2, uh, uh, learning in L2 is very systematic. And the stages are very significant. We go from one stage to another stage. Think of when you go to school to learn, for example, uh, an L2, English language in the middle school. You start by learning uh, sounds, letters, and words, vocabulary, how you make a sentence, types of sentences, and negation, interrogation, until comes, you go through stages, until you will be able to produce a, a, a language as it is produced by its speakers. The next criterion is success. 
Success is usually evaluated in two ways, likelihood and, and quality. For the first language acquirers, these two, these two ways are usually present and successful. However, for second language learners, success is not obviously guaranteed. So success, generally, for our L1, all people succeed to acquire their L1 without any problem. Even people who have some uh, 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 mental or, let's say, problem, they can acquire their L1. However, for L2, not all people who learn a second language could be, for them, this, uh, this learning could be successful. So in this case, success is not guaranteed. Overall, this is all about the first part of theme, theme five. Thank you very much.